Okay, we're just about done with the landscaping. I wanted to show you one more trick here. Let's say we want to go over here and landscape this area next to the fence. Uh, and we want to use the same plants that we used over here on the other side of the design. So I want to get this juniper. I simply select on it. I can tell it's highlighted. I'll go up here to duplicate. And then I'll just click right there and place the juniper in there. Now keep in mind, you can always size up with the program. So if I want this one to be a little bit bigger, and I want it to be behind the Liriops here, so I'll just go send it back. Whoops, I put it behind the bark. So let's select the bark and send it to the back. And there we go. That's the effect I was looking for. Now I want another shrub over here against the fence. I'll use one of these. I'll duplicate it and place it over here. Make it a little bit bigger. So basically my design is done. I know you could criticize it. You could say it could be better. But my point was really to show you techniques like rotating the rock, drawing in with the plants, duplicating things, switching things out. Those are mostly the techniques. Don't get hung up on the landscaping. So we want to save this file now. We had saved the before picture as Jones 123 main, but as a JPEG, but now we want to save it as an L and D. Technically, I've already done that just because I didn't want to lose my work, but let's pretend that we didn't. So a good thing to do before you put in your before and after pictures, if that's what you want to do, is save the after by itself um, with all your landscaping in it. So you can always go back to it and change something. If somebody says, you know what, I don't like that uh, Ligostromia here in the front, you just click on it and press the delete key instead of trying to go back and do it on a JPEG, which is next to impossible. So let's go up here to file. We'll go to save as this time. And then we want to save it as 123main.lnd. You want to make sure you have the LND extension on it because that really is a work in progress. LND is short for landscaping or land. So we'll click save. And now this file is saved as an LND. Let me show you the difference between an LND and a JPEG. So now I have two images opened in the program. This one here and this one here. Now you could see they look exactly the same. That's because they're made from the same picture. But this one here is a JPEG, which you could send to uh, your customer or your coworker or whatever, because anybody can open up a JPEG. It's also something that you would put on the internet. It's a compressed file. But if I go to move this tree and try and select on the Lagerstomia, you'll see that nothing happens. I can't select on anything. I cannot change anything on this image because everything is like glued down to the background like all pictures. You can't just pull out a picture that you took with your digital camera, click on a tree and move it. It doesn't work that way. But if I bring up the LND file, everything is still an independent object where I can move them around, even the shadow, even the pavers on the ground if I want to. Everything is still an independent object, as you can see here. So the moral of the story is you want to save both. You want to save it as a JPEG because it takes up less file space on your hard drive and it can be viewed by anyone else. But you also want to save the LND because the LND enables you to change it in the future. Because when I was a landscape contractor, people always change their minds. You know how that works. They may say, oh, I want the tree just a little over here, not there in front for blocking the door or whatever. They probably even talk like that. Um, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, seriously. Uh, what was my point? Oh, yes, the size. If you look at the size of them, you'll see that an LND file is 3.7 megabytes, where the JPEG file is only 700 kilobytes, which means the LND is probably five times larger. So it does take up more space. And if you sent the customer the LND file, they will not be able to open it up. It just will be impossible for them. So keep that in mind. So now if you wanted to, you're basically done. You could print this picture out as it is as your after. But if you want to create a before and after on the same print, you could do that also. It's just a little bit trickier. And how do you bring in the before picture, right? It's simple. You go up here to File. You go to Import Object. So we're going to open the before picture as an object. And we save the before picture here because that's why we saved it once it came out of the digital camera. Remember that? So we'll click Open. 
and it's going to ask you if you want to size it down. The answer is always yes. You want the picture sized down a little bit so that you can move it around and size it even more. Because if it comes out the exact same size as your picture, you got to go off the side of the screen to get it. So anyway, what you do is just simply grab a corner, drag it down to the size you want it, and then place it up in the corner of the image. It doesn't matter which side you put it on whatever looks best that you're going to print out. Keep in mind too, you can always just print out the before picture as a separate piece. Um, or you could do it like I'm showing you here with a before and after inset. Now if you want to label your image, which I recommend you do because a lot of times people will keep these pictures if you're giving it to them. They'll put it up on their refrigerator or they'll show their neighbors. So it's free advertising for you if you do label it with your company name and phone number. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So if you want to add text, you go up here to Tools and you click on Add Text. What you do is you just type in the information here. Let's say it's the name of your company. And then you may want to put in let's do it, your phone number below that. And then click OK. Now you see that the text came out a little small. And if you don't see the phone number because it's on two lines, just open this up a little bit. OK, obviously too small to be printed out and red doesn't really look good up here in the sky so to change it you right click and you'll go here to font and this works like all other Windows programs we'll pick the color I want white I want it to be bold and I want it to be Arial and make it a little bit larger click OK click OK again and as you can see it's now changed so you can put that up wherever you want. Oh, might help if I spelled things right. Let's take an O out of there. Now, if you want to place the word before over here, you could do that also, but I'm not going to show you how to do it. It's the same technique. So now at this point, you could save this also, but I would not save it over my LND with just the landscaping on it, just because uh, I may want to change things with it, and I always want to keep that one pristine and the way it is. Of course, you can always take these out by clicking on them and pressing the delete key, but just as a force of habit, let's go to Save As, and let's give it a different name. So... I have it saved. Now we're also ready to print this out. And this is something that you need to pay attention to because you'd be surprised how many calls we get. This image we uh, made was about 1,200 pixels. And if we're printing it out on an inkjet printer, it will fill up the page nicely. But you got to tell the program to do that. So to do that, you go to File, you go to Program Defaults, and you click on Printing Covers Entire Page. That will make the picture fill up an 8.5 by 11, assuming that's the size printer that you're using, with this 1200 pixel image. So if it's only filling up a portion of it, or it's too big or too small, this is uh, something you have to check. And once you've put the check mark in there, this will be the default. So we'll click OK. And then to print it, we could just go here to the printing icon, select the printer that you want to print from, go into Properties, now your printer settings are going to be different than mine, I can guarantee you that. But one thing that you want to make sure you have set up, or I'll say at least three things you want to make sure you have set up, is that you put it into landscape mode, because that way the way the pictures are created, it's going to fill up the whole piece of paper. You want to place it as glossy paper. Um, if you print it out on regular white paper, it's just going to look bad. So take my word for it. You don't want to do that. Spend a little bit of money and get the glossy paper. Then you also want to make sure that your quality is set for the highest quality. It takes a wee bit longer to print it out, but it's well worth it. I can't show you that for this Brother printer because it's really just a black and white printer. Uh, so keep that in mind. Have those settings set up. And then when you print it out, it takes a couple seconds for it to get going and it will print the image out in full color. Now one more thing you may want to do is you may want to email the image directly to the customer. The program has a built-in feature that speeds that process up for you, but keep in mind it only works with Outlook, Outlook Express, or any hard drive based 
email program. It will not, I repeat, will not work with Gmail, Hotmail, uh, Yahoo Mail, because those are web-based email programs. There's no way it could save the file and upload it automatically to the server. It just doesn't have the security stuff to do that. But it does work really well with Outlook. So let me show you how quick and easy that is. First you go here to File. You click on Send JPEG Email and boom it saved it as a JPEG and attached it into your email for you so all you have to do is put in the email address a subject and a uh, message to the owner so it's that simple I'm going to send it off to myself and I'll open up my email program here in a second and show you what it looks like so now I've received this as an email I'll open up that email I double click on the image and there it is pretty simple. Okay, well that's about all you need to know to get started. I recommend again that you watch the training movies on the Define Area Tools in the Perspective menu again for putting in hardscapes. Uh, if you got any questions, give us a call. Well, good luck and sell some more landscaping.